Hello, my friends. Thank you for joining me today at the Punlo Coffee Table. My name's Kip. I'm your host here at the Punlo Coffee Table. Let me ask you a question. Why should you be a Christian? Let's go ahead and open with the prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this time together. As we contemplate this question, Lord, help us to understand why. Why should we be a follower of yours, Lord? And help us to understand how important this question really is. Lead us in this conversation, Lord, in a way that is pleasing to you and and use me, despite the words I might use. Help the listener to hear the message you have for them to you to hear today. And I pray this in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. So okay. Why should you be a Christian? You know, this is a question we posed over the dinner table a while back and we usually hear a lot about the cost of being a Christian. But what about the cost of not being a Christian? Uh, or maybe a you might hear things like, what is, uh, you know, all these things that you lose when you become a Christian. And instead, I, why don't we talk about all the things that we get when we become a Christian? Being a follower of Jesus provides us with things that we cannot get any other place. Now, I want us to remember that a, a Christian is a follower of Christ. That's Jesus, a follower of Jesus. We're a servant of Jesus. But a non-believer does not understand this. Deep inside, though, a non-believer wants to know why. Why should they become a follower of this Jesus? And it's our responsibility as believers to give them a reason. And I, I think too often, pastors and Christians talk about the cost of being a Christian, and the reality is there's a cost to everything in life. To you, or to somebody, or to something, there's always a cost. There's a price for every choice that we make in life. Uh, being a Christian has a price, and not being a Christian has a price. You know, I think we should talk about why we are Christians. What we can do because we are Christians. And what is the cost if we don't follow Jesus? So what do you worry about? You know, what keeps you up at night? Rich or poor, there are many things that people worry about. Poor people envy the rich uh, for what they don't have, and they're depressed about it. The rich always want more, envy, and they envy things that money can't buy and they're depressed about it so the poor think it's going to be solved by money the rich have money and it's not solved by money now can you remember when you were a child let me just take you back did you ever worry about any of those things uh, most children didn't whether you had or you did not have you trusted that someone was going to provide for you now i I want you to think about it just for a moment. What if you could trust someone to take care of you now in your life? Someone who wants the best for you. Would you follow that someone? I know I would. So I contend that all humans yearn for someone to follow. It's just how we're made. It's in our DNA. Whether from the living or dead, we look for people, for guidance, uh, for direction in our lives. When we are young, we might look to our parents or a teacher or a coach or some celebrity. And as we grow older, we might look to a political leader or someone from history you learn about them and you try to emulate them. Or I put this in other words, it means you try to become more and more like them, or at least the traits that you like. You try to use their words. You try to do actions that are similar to theirs and, and develop attitudes toward things the way they had or do. So 
why did this Jesus? That's what non Christians often ask. You know, why, why be a Christian, a follower of Christ? And my response to this is just this question If not Jesus, then who? Who is worthy of me emulating? You know, I contend that we all emulate someone or some ones. And I've heard people say that they don't follow anyone. And that's good for them if that's true. For myself, I need guidance. So yes, I, I look for people to emulate. People I can work to be more like. And it's not just one person, typically. Uh, when I learn about someone, or if I am being taught by someone, I try to emulate the wisdom and the character traits in that person that I admire. So, well, when we are choosing that someone to follow, you should see if they have something or a trait or a character or an attitude, maybe it's style, something that we wish we had. That's what we look for in that person. Now, I personally have a list of people that I wish to emulate in some way. You know, some from the Bible, like uh, David's heart or Daniel's faith or Joseph's perseverance, Paul's peace, Peter's boldness, and of course, obviously, my master Jesus. But I also have many people I listen to and know that I try to become more like. And this list of people includes people like Dallas Willard, uh, my parents, uh, my wife, and, and I can go on to a long list. Each has something I want to develop, a trait that I know I need more of, and they are worth emulating. So again, I have to ask you, why Jesus? And, and I, I'm, I'm asking myself that. So first, you have to value what God values, and he values you. He was willing to take on the humanity's flesh and live among us so that we would have a way to live with him. That's putting value in us. That's showing love. But I think uh, we can better understand why Jesus by looking at the character of Jesus and the promises that he made. There are a lot of promises of Jesus in the Bible, but I want to show just a few of them today. What are the top things people worry about? Money, security, health, children. I know I worry about those things sometimes. Would you follow someone who can help you with all of these things, all of these worries? Well, Matthew 11, 28 to 30, out of the New Living Translation says this. Then Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. So we all have burdens. That's worries. Uh, that's troubles in this life. Things that keep us up at night. Jesus is telling us he will give us rest from these burdens and these worries. We just need to rely on him. Jesus promises to teach us how to handle our burdens. He says his yoke is easy. You know, everyone has a yoke. I have a yoke. You have a yoke. Jesus says, trade yours for his, and then he'll help us to manage that yoke. I don't think we can underestimate what it's like to have someone carry or help you carry your problems, your, your burdens in life, and guide you 
in your activities. It, it, it actually removes the worries from these activities. We just need to trust Jesus to lead us where we need to be. And the burden that Jesus gives us in return is light and easy to manage. That is his promise. And my, my wife likes to put it this way. She, she says, you sleep like a baby. And, and I often joke, I mean, did you know that Jesus promised this, that you could sleep like a baby? And let me just paraphrase it this way. Give your troubles to Jesus and trust him with the outcome. And then you sleep like a baby. Yes, following Jesus means you can rely on him to take care of you. And you don't have to worry. Jesus tells us, his followers that is, that we don't need to worry. In Luke chapter 12, verses 22 to 31, again out of the New Living Translation. Then he said to his disciples, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, nor about the body, what you will put on. Life is more than food, and the body is more than clothing. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which have neither storehouse nor barn, and God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And which of you, by worrying, can add a cubit to his stature or to his life? If you then are not able to do this least, why are you anxious for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, and yet I say to you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothes the grass which today is in the field and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O you of little faith? And do you not seek, and do not seek what you should eat or what you should drink, nor have an anxious mind? For all these things the nations of the world seek after, and your Father knows that you need these things. But seek the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added to you. I love this scripture. Uh, Jesus is promising you a life without worry. He promises to take care of our needs. Just like a father, we, we expect our father when we're young children to take care of us. And God is going to take care of us just like the father he really is. He will take care of us. God promises to give us guidance and help. And Proverbs 16.9 says this, A man's heart plans his ways but the Lord directs his steps. And again, in James 1, verse 5, it says this, If any one of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. If we follow Jesus, we will, well, he will give us help making decisions. We have... Well, we have the Bible, and we have the Holy Spirit that lives within us. Jesus also promises peace to all of those that follow him. And in John chapter, thir or chapter 16, verse 33, it says this, I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. And then again in Proverbs 3, verses 5 to 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. And in all your ways submit to him, and he will make your path straight. So you hear that all these verses are promising us that we can have peace and assurance if we surrender control to our leader, that's King Jesus, we also have a reason not to be overwhelmed by our circumstances. And 2 Corinthians 4, verses 14 to 18 says this. 
We know that God, who raised the Lord Jesus, will also raise us with Jesus and present us to himself together with you. All of this is for your benefit. And as God's grace reaches more and more people, there will be a great thanksgiving and God will receive more and more glory. That is why we never give up. Though our bodies are dying and our spirits are being renewed every day. For our present troubles are small and won't last very long. Yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. So we don't look at the troubles we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze on things that we cannot see. For the things we see now will soon be gone, but the things we cannot see will last forever. You know, those are just great promises. And there are many, many other promises in the scriptures, but I know all this is Bible. And maybe for some of you, that is not very compelling. So let me give you some examples from real life, from my life and from my family's lives. My life and my family's lives are filled with what I call beautiful catastrophes. A beautiful catastrophe is a burden like health or finance or, or family issues. These are burdens. These are troubles. The world sees them as catastrophes, but the outcome is beautiful, a beautiful catastrophe. And, and these beautiful catastrophes teach me that I can trust Jesus with the outcomes in my life. I have learned in the valley or on the mountaintop that I don't need distress. God defines success. So I don't have to worry about the outcomes, what's going to happen next. And that's truly beautiful. Let me give you a health story. Health is one thing that we cannot control. We cannot buy it with all the money we have. I had COVID-19 in March of 2021, and I was very sick. I was in the hospital in the COVID isolation unit for a little over a week, and I could barely breathe. I don't actually remember much of it because I was not very conscious. Um, it was a test of how much I trusted God. As I laid there in my hospital bed, I, I was sure I was dying. In fact, I felt like I was dying. And I felt an amazing peace, an amazing assurance in that moment when I realized I was probably going to die. I realized that death is just a graduation to heaven, which doesn't seem so bad. I trusted God, loved my family more than I did, and he would take care of them even if I was taken home to heaven. It was an amazing moment for me. And if I had not been a follower of Jesus, I would not have had that peace and assurance. I would have been scared to die, not knowing what would come next, not what would happen to my family. Peace and assurance are just an amazing feeling. It's this complete sense of sense. I, 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 it's serenity. Is It's even in the middle of this tremendous trouble and storm in my life, I felt peace, and I was good no matter what God would do, and I knew that only God had control of that circumstance. Now, money is another thing people struggle with, and let me give you a money story from our family. I work as a consultant, and what that means is I only get paid when I have a job. Uh, there's no steady paycheck, there's no salary, and I've been doing this for more than 10 years, and I've only gotten paid when I worked, over a decade. I have to trust God and trust that he will bring me enough work to pay my bills. Part of my situation is a promise to God that I'll never look for work. And so I just let him be in control. Uh, about the same time we started uh, doing the freelance consulting was about the same time we got involved with charities and ministries and 
over the last 10 years, our commitment to our charitable activities has increased, yet my work has decreased. And the amazing thing is our activities always get funded. Uh, God knows exactly what he wants us to do, and he controls all the money. I know when there's a, something big that God wants us to do, more money will come in. So I've experienced plenty during this period. I mean, I've had some years when I've made a tremendous amount of money. Uh, and then I've had other years where I almost had nothing. And through this up and down, I've learned to trust God. Uh, he owns everything anyway. And I know that money is just a tool that he allows us to use. So over the last few years, my work has become less and less, yet I still seem to make the same money. And our cost of living seem to shrink, even though inflation has been out of control. And I know that can only happen in God's economy. And my family has been growing. And that to me is just, uh, well, it's an amazing gift when I can see that God is truly in control over all those things. And I don't have to worry about money. I can trust the one that is trustworthy, that that's God. I trust that he will care for my needs and provide according to his plan. Now, I want you to understand this is not a blind trust or blind faith. I trust because Jesus has provided before. Jesus has proven himself to be trustworthy. Now, my wife and I both have stories about finding jobs and all kinds of other miraculous events. And we have seen these miraculous events because we have recognized them. I know that everyone out there has similar events. They just maybe haven't recognized it for what it is. God truly is leading his followers. My wife and I are examples of that. And I know there's so many other stories out there. Let's go ahead and close with a prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this time together. Thank you for being you. Thank you for the many, many promises that you have given us that can give us peace and, and teach us that you are trustworthy. And Lord, I'm so grateful for the moments in my life when I have been able to see you at work doing exactly what you've promised us. And I pray for everyone listening that they might have that moment. It, you will reveal yourself to them if they only wish you to. And I pray this in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. So, through the process of following my master Jesus, I have lost my insecurities. If, if he asks me to do public speaking, public speaking, then I speak. Uh, if he asks me to give money, I just give. I don't think twice. I follow wherever Jesus leads because he's always led in a place that's better than anything I can imagine. My old selfish and self-centered life is gone. And it's been replaced with an amazing, exciting life of being his follower. Uh, I like this old hymn. It's, well, it, it's called, It Is Well With My Soul. And if you don't know it, look it up and listen to it. No matter what situation I experience in my life, I trust God and it is well with my soul. We talk around the dinner table about the bigger view uh, seeing God's bigger and better plan, not only for our life, but for the lives of the people around us. And it is so exciting to wait on God, to see that amazing. And I know he's always going to do amazing. So I want, I want you to ask that question. Why Jesus? Well, if you were to ask me, I would say, who else? No worries, no burdens. Sleep like a baby, and he'll take care of you. I think that's a pretty good person to follow. You know, 
Jesus guides us and helps us when we need help. He gives us hope and he gives us peace and we have assurance in him. You know, why wouldn't you choose Jesus? So one last question I have for you today. Will you? So I want to thank you for joining me today at the Poonlaw Coffee Table. And I hope you like this message. And if, if you did, share a link with a friend. I'm going to follow this up with a second part in this series uh, probably next week. So if you have any questions for me, please contact me. My email should be on the screen. So until next time from the Poonlaw Coffee Table, God bless.